Best Story Building in Nigeria is located in Badagri, and this attracts over 13,000 visitors every year. Now, it's such a lovely apartment. You go there and it just reminds you of certain old memories that you probably did not have you know, the opportunity to explore. When you go to the top of the first story building in Lagos State, you'd see the Bible translated in English and in Yoruba by Samuel Ajayi Crow. That's just so nostalgic. And it's also the most popular mission house as that was the first place that Christians settled in when they came into Lagos. For me, the most interesting memory I have of the first story building in Lagos is a well outside. Now, this well, they say, has the potential to make all your wishes and your prayers and dreams come true. So I went there, fetched a bottle of water. I don't know where the water is. And I said a certain prayer. The prayer hasn't come true, but fingers crossed. When it does, I will be sure to announce. I'll do a grand announcement on Instagram. But first, enjoy our tour of the first story building in Badagri. <music> Now, we are in the first story building here in Badagri, built by Reverend C.A. Goma. There's no how we talk about the transatlantic slave trade in Badagri without mentioning the activity of the missionaries. In some places around the world, you'll find out that even missionaries owned slaves. But the difference is that here in Badagri, the missionaries assisted in the abolition of the slave trade. When the missionaries came, they found out that the transatlantic slave trade was still going on in this environment. They were giving information to Freetown Sierra Leone, and Freetown Sierra Leone was giving information to England. Eventually, the British came, and uh, it was a warfare. Eventually, an agreement was signed. Despite that, the business was still going on because there were some Europeans around this environment in different quarters in Badagri who want the business to continue. Here, the missionaries helped, assisted in abolishing the trans Atlantic slave trade here in Badagri. The missionary landed in Badagri on the 20, 24th September 1842 and the missionaries taught the gospel of Christianity under a famous Agia tree in Badagri. Two reverend missionaries preached under the tree, one from Methodist Church and one from Anglican Church. A man from Methodist Church and his name called Reverend Thomas Bresh Freeman who landed in Badagri on the 24th September 1842. A man from Anglican Church, that is a man called Reverend Harry Townsend, who landed in Badagri on the 17th December 1842. And both of them preached the gospel of Christianity under the famous Agia tree. And both of them celebrated the first Christmas together on the 25th December 1842 under the famous Agia tree. So two things that happened under the tree. The first preached the gospel of Christianity and the missionaries also celebrated the first Christmas under the tree in Badagri in 1842. But the famous Agia tree we're talking about, the tree is no more standing. The tree have already fell, but the tree lasted for 350 years according to the history of our headers. Now, we also have the monument that replaced the, what, the tree in Badagri. We have the monument of the Agia tree in Badagri. My name is Mr. Ezekiel Oviavunu. I work for the Diocese of Badagri, Anglican Communion Church of Nigeria. And they are the one in charge of the story building. And that is the first story building in the whole of Nigeria. It was built in 1845 by a reverend called Reverend C.A. Goma. That is the man who been in charge of the construction of the story building. But the man used seven laborers for the building of this house and they laid the foundation of the building in 1842. The building were completed in 1845. So the building took missionary three years to build. And all the materials used for the construction of this story building, materials was imported from England and showcased to us here. And that is the materials called iron corrugated sheet. 
the ones used for the roofing of the building since 1842. It's called iron corrugated sheet. And we're also talking about the nails since 1842. And these are the nails since 1842. All these materials was imported. We're talking about the engines used and to mount the door. And we're also talking about the bond brick and clay for the foundation to the since 1842. Now, inside of this story building, we have six bedrooms inside of the building, two sitting rooms inside of this building, and four stores inside of this building. But there's no toilet inside of the building, no kitchen and no bedroom inside of this building. But we also have the room of a man called Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder. That's where we're going to be talking about the man who happened to be in his sleep, who later returned back. And he have worked with the missionary over there. He returned with the missionary back to Nigeria. And he was the one that did the translation of the English Bible into the Yoruba Bible. So, move to the next one. This is a room of a man called Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder. A man called Ajayi is from Oyo State, from a village in Oyo State called Oshogun Village in Isenyi local government. Ajayi was born in 1809, but 1821, age of 12 years, Ajayi was captured as a slave. And his own town, his own village was captured as a slave at the age of 12 years. Ajayi was sold to Portuguese. But the British Navy stopped the ship of those Portuguese and returned the ship of the Portuguese back to Africa because the British and the raised the abolition of state trade in England in 1807. But instead of the ship to land where he take off, the ship land in Freetown in Sierra Leone. Ajayi worked in Freetown in Sierra Leone, worked under the Reverend Missionary. The Reverend Missionary Ajayi worked under him. His name called Crowder. Crowder is a master to Ajayi and Crowder is a priest. And Crowder was one that baptized Ajayi and named Ajayi Samuel. Now, Crowder sent Ajayi to school. Ajayi attended a school in Sierra Leone called Fort Abbey College. Ajayi graduated from the school and he was sent to school of theology and that's seminary school. The man became a reverend in England. So when the man became a reverend in England, but the missionary needs somebody here to do the work, in, the work of interpreters, Ajayi returned back home as interpreter. And he was one that translated the English Bible into Yoruba in 1845. They printed the Bible in London by a company called Lower and Brydon Printer Limited. The Bible is now 100 and 74 years old, as old as this story building. But the English Bible brought by those white missionaries, brought by Reverend Harry Townsend, the Bible is now 177 years old. Ajayi was later ordained as the first African bishop in 1861. The young man worked under the man as a chaplain, and that is a man called Reverend Babington Macaulay. Reverend Babington Macaulay married to the daughter of Ajay, called Abigail, and gave birth to Abat Macaulay. Abat Macaulay on one era coins is a grandson to Ajay, and is a son to the man called Reverend Babington Macaulay. Ajay died at the age of 82 years in 1891, and Ajay was buried in Lagos Island. And that's what we can say about Ajay Krada. This is the first save established by the missionary in 1856. And that is the way the missionary kept their money and some of the valuables items. Now this is the money called the cowries. And the cowries is being recognized as currency in Africa and Nigeria. But why it couldn't recognize cowries? And when the white men came to trade slaves, they are giving our people gun, mirrors, umbrellas, packet of matches, spoon, tobacco for exchange of slaves. And after slavery stopped, end in Badagri in 1888. Now, the British later colonized us and they introduced their money to us and they introduced a money called the farthing. That is the first coins introduced by the British. And after farthing, they introduced a money called the uh, penny. And after penny, they introduced a money called the, the pounds. And after pounds, they introduced a money called shilling. And after shilling, they introduced money called the pence. So 1973, the Federal Republic of Nigeria changed to Naira and Kobo. So we started spending money called one Kobo, half Kobo, five Kobo. 10 kobo, 25 kobo, 50 kobo, and 1 naira. 
But we also have some note money here. We have a money called the Old 10 Naira. We have a money called the Old 5 Naira. And a money called the Old 1 Naira. And that is all what we have in the first story building in Nigeria. We are still going downstairs and to see the well called the Miracle Well. This is the well dug by the missionary in 1842. When the missionary arrived at Dagri, the CMA's missionary dug the well in 1842 because the missionary are looking for the clean well water in Badagri when they came because they discovered that most well water in Badagri, the water have taste and the water have color. We don't have clean water in Badagri and most of our water have the color and taste because of the lagoon that we are very close and the Atlantic Ocean affect every other well water in Badagri. But this well water dug by the missionary in 1842, the well, it's only well that is clean and it isn't well that is drinkable for people live in this community as a whole. And the well since 1842, it have never dry and it's never changed color. Now people have people develop a kind of a fit belief for the water, for the well water dug by the missionary in 1842. They take the water at top. They had their faith, believe on the water, and God answered their prayer. And Nigerians and Nigerians are named it what? Miracle well, water of life. That is the well we're talking about, the dog by the missionary in 1842. I remain Mr. Ezekiel Soteji Viavolu. I work for the Dow Sobadagi Agnican Communion. Thank you very much. To enjoy more of this, our Ogunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.